The latest episode of Real Time with Bill Maher criticized the child entertainment industry and called out a liberal double standard. Maher's scathing target took aim at Nickelodeon, the subject of the new HBO documentary Quiet on Set, that exposes the sexual abuse that kids endured while working there. Let's watch. It is just scene after scene, clip after clip, of the child stars of their day being subjected to obviously inappropriate, highly sexualized degradation and quite a few pickles going through glory holes. <laughs> I was grossed out and I've gone camping with John Waters. Rath took aim at what he referred to as, quote, liberals who berated Republican Florida Governor Ron DeSantis' stance toward Disney for similar allegations. Let's listen. It didn't just expose a dangerous workplace. It also exposed hypocrisy because it must be pointed out that when the evil governor of Florida was saying the exact same thing about kids and creepy stuff at Disney that liberals now find intolerable at Nickelodeon, he was dismissed as a hick and a bigot. But why would a kids content factory like Disney be all that different than the one at Nickelodeon? A 2014 CNN report discovered that at least 35 Disney employees had been arrested for sex crimes against children. And in 2021, Disney child star Allison Stoner confessed she only narrowly survived the toddler to train wreck pipeline. The next year, child star Cold Sprouse told the New York Times that young actresses at the Disney Channel were heavily sexualized from an early age. You know, Willie Sutton said he robbed banks because that's where the money is. And the reason we find pedophiles in the Boy Scouts and the Rectory and Kids TV is that's where the kids are. <laughs> De DeSantis wasn't wrong. But we're so tribal now, the left will overlook child fucking if the guy from the wrong party calls it out. Is this the left overlooking, I'm not going to repeat what, uh, what Bill Maher said there? I, it's difficult for me to understand what Bill Maher's argument is. It's almost as though he didn't realize that the battle, uh, the objections to Ron DeSantis were over a piece of legislation that was colloquially termed the Don't Say Gay Bill, which had provisions that mediated whether or not school districts could talk about homosexuality. I think there was some stuff about whether or not school districts were obliged to tell parents if their kids represented that they were gay and, and, or uh, on the spectrum on, in, in school, those kinds of things. Disney got pressure from its employees to speak out against the bill after it had first declined to say nothing at all. When Disney, be responding to the will of its employees, put out a statement saying they disagree with the legislation, Ron DeSantis, in an authoritarian move, decided to use the power of the state to push his ideological agenda onto a private company by stripping away their special status. Now, there's an argument that they should never have had that special status to begin with, but what is clear is that the state, Ron DeSantis, was happy to extend it as long as they conformed to his ideological agenda. So none of this was about the horrific practices at Disney and also, I think, Nickelodeon that were portrayed in that horrific documentary. And to try to pretend like the objection to Ron DeSantis was that he was calling out pedophiles and saying that this was a liberal willingness to look the other way, when we all know what so many conservatives and Republicans have done in response to the horrific, widespread abuses of the Catholic Church over the years, is quite a hard pill to swallow. Yeah, I don't think... Um, look, I opposed that bill because it seemed like overreach to me and it, it, the details seemed to be, um, frankly, violating the privacy rights of students themselves. Uh, now, I think parents who want their schools to be more free of this kind of training or discussion relating to sexual or gender-based matters have the right to assert that authority over their schools. I don't think this bill was quite the right way to do it. Um, I think that's what Bill Maher was getting at there. I, I agree. I don't know that it really point, has anything to do with the left, frankly, or that, and, and again, Ron DeSantis took on this fight for this reason. And in the same way that I wouldn't want the federal government telling social media companies, oh, we're going to take away your, your we're going to change the regulations to negatively affect you if we don't like the speech you have on the, pol on, on the platforms relating to COVID. I felt similarly about Ron DeSantis doing that with Disney, although the, that, that law, the, the, their special status did seem, frankly, a bit corporatist and corrupt.
to begin with. Um, the uh, what I'm seeing a lot of conservatives saying in reaction to this documentary about mm -hmm. Nickelodeon is, you know, they called it the mainstream. Again, it's not really about liberals or about the left. It's more about the media calling conservatives crazy or conspiratorial when they talked about when conservatives complained about widespread sexual abuse, Jeffrey Epstein, etc. You're called a pizza gator type person. But now there's but when there's there's evidence emerges of a widespread sexual abuse problem at Nickelodeon. I think everybody who's seen that documentary, and this, by the way, this isn't the first thing on this topic. No. We've been reading, we've been getting information about what's been going on, what went on in Nickelodeon under that one specific um, producer who was mm -hmm. responsible for, I think, all that in the Amanda show and, and um, maybe iCarly and some others. Um, Dan Schneider. Yeah, Dan Schneider, that guy. We've been hearing about him for like 10 years now. Yeah. Um, there's been, so this is not like, whoa, my mind's blown, I've never heard of this. No, we've, we've been learning about this for years and years and years and years. So there's, so there's actually not a lot new here. It was widely known. It's re reminiscent of the Harvey Weinstein situation where everyone knew yeah. forever how disgusting and how bad this was. And um, that's all. Yeah, I think, so the, the other part of this I think that is really ironic is that when you actually watch the documentary, what's part of what's galling, and it, and it takes us back seat to, I think, the testimony from one, one child actor in particular, um, who, what's novel is that he kind of outs himself as the victim in a rape, uh, mm -hmm. sexual assault case that um, was public at the time, but his, his, his role in it as the victim um, was not public. Obviously, that is the, the, the the star event of the show, the main takeaway of the show. But in addition to it, you get a lot of testimony from adult empl female employees about how they felt victimized, marginalized by Dan Schneider as well, being forced to give him massages on set, being forced to share one writer's salary when more junior men were hired on who had no writing experience on the show and very little writing experience, period, for full salary positions. Um, statements that were made to them in public in writers' rooms that implicated their kind of sexuality uh, in a way that was meant to silence them and was very jarring and like very horrific and very inappropriate. A hostile workplace is what's being described. And those women in, in the documentary talk about how the Me Too movement helped them feel like they no longer had to put up with those kinds of common practices in Hollywood and really credit the Me Too movement and feminist movements for enabling them to have more power within their union and to push back against the Dan Snyders of the world. So for, again, Bill Maher to position this as it's the left or liberals who want to ignore these kind of workplace violations when it has, in these last few Me Too, post Me Too years, been the right that's been so critical of the movement and focused more on instances of overreach than any validation of how much that toxic environment hurt both women, children, and other and 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 adult men at in the workplace who can be victimized by these kinds of behaviors if they go unchecked. Again, it's just really rich. Yeah. I mean, to be clear, I do think there were examples of overreach produced by Me Too. There are some bad policies coming out. Actually, just on uh, Friday, it happened that the Biden administration finally released its new Title IX guidelines that it had been working on for several years. Um, this relates to the due process uh, protections on college campuses when you're accused of sexual misconduct. Um, I've done radars on the past about them. I used to do a lot of reporting on them. Um, there are a lot of concerns that civil liberties focused um, groups and attorneys have had about how it how 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 this reform this regulation um, tips the scales if you're accused of something obviously there is a lot of legitimate um, uh, Exorable sexual misconduct on college campuses that should be dealt with and that should be punished, um, but there, but you know, people deserve a presumption of innocence. They deserve a right to, um, to to try to present evidence on their behalf, to have access to an attorney. Some basic things like access to an attorney, the right to understand the evidence against you, the right to be made fully aware of the charges against you. Those are pretty sacrosanct elements of our system that have have come under. Um, that are under threat, unfortunately, due yeah, to Yeah, and I don't want to lose track, though, because we kind of now just recreated the phenomenon I had mentioned. If you bring up Me Too, the emphasis is on these instances of overreach, and we there's no oxygen spent talking about all the people who were saved, all the people who now can 
advocate for themselves because the presumption isn't that people like Dan Snyder can do what they want to do on set and force female staffers to give them massages and to touch them and to have to look the other way as he makes repeated sexualized comments about them. If you care about the way that children were able to manipulate it in those context. Teenagers were, were manipulated in those contexts. Those same people frequently abuse their power with anyone with whom they could abuse their power, including weaponizing sexuality against female employees and others in their employ. That has to, you, you cannot selectively care about people when it aligns with one political agenda or the other. And that is exactly what Bill Maher is doing. And that is exactly what Ron DeSantis was doing and why so many Democrats, yes, will say you're a bad faith actor, even if occasionally you chance upon a cause that's decent. I don't personally remember Ron DeSantis specifically talking about like child actors within the Disney realm being um, uh, sexualized. I see that, uh, Bill Maher pulled up a newspaper title. I tried to Google it really quickly while we were talking. I couldn't pull up that, I couldn't find that exact article. I did find reference to uh, Ron DeSantis specifically using the fra that phrase though. So I guess somewhere embedded in his campaign against Disney as a company, Disney as a company that had special privileges within the state of Florida, Disney as a company that pushed back against this don't say gay law. He might have also said something about how child predators are horrible, but pretending like that critique buried within the rest is what liberals were objecting to is so incredibly dishonest. And Bill Maher's own disinterest in the Me Too movement, except for to talk about how it's gone too far and imperils people who are in a position like his, again, is extremely bad faith. We'll have more rising right after this.